We're gonna we're gonna get started here, and Daniel, uh, how you doing today, Daniel? Good. Is this a good day today? Yes. What kind of day is it for you? A good day. A happy day. A happy day. Should we tell them why it's a happy day? Because we're singing a song called Happy Day. Well, there you go. Let's sing them a song. Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive Empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout, Shout it out, out. Jesus, Jesus is alive He's alive And oh, happy day Happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free and Meeting face to face I am yours, Jesus You are mine And this joy Perfect peace Earthly pain Finally we'll see Celebrate, Celebrate. Jesus, Jesus Is alive He's alive And oh Happy day Happy day my sin away oh happy day happy day i'll never be the same forever i am changed oh morning. That's a tough act to follow. Whoa. Hello. Are we good? Tough act to follow. That, uh, that young man's going to be a star someday, I believe. Uh, like I said, good morning. Welcome everybody to Community Church of Vincennes. <laughs> God has given us a beautiful, happy day this morning, and uh, we hope that you're worship experience this morning is meaningful uh, wherever you're worshiping with us this morning. A few announcements. Registration is now open for Vacation Bible School. You can register your child online or there are paper copies at the Welcome Center. Register by May 19th. If you're interested in helping with Vacation Bible School, please sign up at the Welcome Center. There will be a blood drive on Monday, April 22nd, 1 to 6 in the pavilion. And if you're interested in a woman's Bible study, please sign up at the Welcome Center for that. Mary Martha's do have noodles 
left, $8 a bag. Uh, project is underway to collect recipes and put together a new recipe book. Everyone can submit their favorite recipe to Eva Benson. Dennis Chatton here, are you going to turn in your weenies in a pan? I remember that was always a fan favorite. I hope that you'll consider donating that recipe. Okay, I think that's all we got here. All right. And there is sign up for uh, youth camp, children's camp. That's all in the newsletter as well. So, and we're looking for volunteers. There's a, you can sign up in there for uh, to volunteer. You can sign up to get information. You can register your kids. Uh, if you're looking for a scholarship, they have that as well. Anyway, check that out. Uh, our crew here is going to be running that. I'm going to be the spiritual director that particular week. So, sign on. And we're going to need some help. So, <laughs> I want you over here too. Well, let's pray. Good morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for your love and your grace. And we ask that you would just speak to our hearts this day. Strengthen us, encourage us, challenge us, Lord, that we might be our best for you to get your word out to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let us stand and rise. I wanted to share with you a quote that I saw this morning and I thought it was perfect. It's from John Ortberg. He's a Christian author. He wrote, if you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat, which I remember reading many years ago. Um, his words are this. I need to worship because without it, I can forget that I have a big God beside me and live in fear. I need to worship because without it, I can forget his calling and begin to live in a spirit of self-preoccupation. I need to worship because without it, I lose a sense of wonder and gratitude and plod through life with blinders on. I need worship because my natural tendency is towards self-reliance and stubborn independence. <laughs> That spoke to me because I tend to rely on myself and be a little stubborn. So I invite you to join me. Let us worship our good, good Father on this happy day.
Uh, we've come to that time in the service for joys and concerns, and Pastor's going to share uh, one first. All right. So, uh, for those who hadn't heard, and I think most haven't, John Baptiste, as you knew, had uh, come into town. Uh, he was uh, going to be a chaplain over uh, at the prison in Carlisle. Things didn't kind of work out over there in that regard. It didn't turn out to be a good fit, and so... He was uh, still looking around and actually found a place as a chaplain at a hospital over in Oregon. So he has gone out west. Now, he is still looking to uh, be a pastor in the uh, Global Methodist Church, so we're trying to continue working with him on that. But uh, he, he arrived, I think, Wednesday or something uh, this past week. But uh, do keep him in your prayers. and. Uh, that uh, God will provide the right way and find that means into uh, pastoring a church as well. So thank you, and we give God praise. <clears throat> we'll keep John in our prayers as he follows where God leads him. Other joys and concerns, uh, John Hedge's thyroid surgery has been rescheduled for Friday, April 19th. Rex Seitz and his nephew, Mark Butcher, underwent open heart surgery on Thursday and is recovering in Evansville. Mary Schaefer passed away Wednesday, April 12th. Her funeral arrangements are visitation at Emmons Macy Steffi Funeral Home in Lawrenceville, 4 to 6 p.m. on Friday, April 19th. Burial will be at Durr Cemetery on Saturday, April 20th. The funeral service will be at 11.30 a.m. at the Pink Staff Church. <clears throat> Ina Cope called and requested prayer for prayers for Dale as he had tests run on his back to see if it's cancer. Linda Smith had a doctor visit on April 10th. Doctor said she's doing well and we'll see her again in two months. Virginia <clears throat> Our Jenna's brother, Don, is recovering from surgery at Good Samaritan. Any more joys and concerns? If not, please pray with me. You are a good father, perfect in every way. We often search for the answers that only you can provide. You know just what we need before we say a word. Help us to reach what you have called us to do. To you we entrust everything, for you have given us life and will call us to resurrection. We thank you for all that you have given us in your word, which enables us to become your children and find your way for us on earth. We pray for your compassion and healing for those individuals who need it. We pray for your comfort and your presence for those who are grieving and lonely. Help us to be your servants, willing to do your work, to offer care and provide our presence. And now we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's prepare to give unto the Lord of our gifts and tithes and offerings as we hear the wonderful rendition of I Need Thee Every Hour.
Heavenly Father, once more we give you praise for the great bounty with which you have filled our lives. Bless and multiply, Lord, this offering to your service, to the building of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on down here. I believe Patty has a little something for you this morning. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Ma'am, I got that. Better turn around and see who's giving it to me. Our beautiful song today. Oh, my goodness. Made my day. Okay, do we have any coming down from upstairs. I think we do. What? She's fine. She's fine. Okay, you want to sit up here with us? Come on, I won't bite. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, goodness. You going to make it? Okay, who can tell me what a witness is? An eyewitness. Somebody who saw what happened. Okay, do you ever watch the news? Ooh, I like the outfit. Okay, now, I'm going to talk today about from the book of John, and it talks about being a witness. So, first of all, I need for you today, every time you hear me say the word like saw or watch or see, I want you to make glasses. Can you make glasses? I'm sorry about that, folks. Okay. Okay. Now, only when I say those words, though, okay? So that means you're listening. <clears throat> okay. So, do you ever watch the news and it says, you know, this is Patty Dryman with Eyewitness News, Channel 10. And all of a sudden, we see that there's a building on fire out on Willow Street. They're very good. Boy, you're on the ball. Okay, anyway, so we have, uh, we have Everett Dillinger out there, our reporter, who's going to give us an update. Okay, take it away, Mr. Dillinger. 
Okay, so what does he do? He gets on and he says, do you see this fire behind me? Boy, it's really hot out here. I'm a witness to this fire. Okay, got it? <clears throat> okay. So then he would say, um, I saw exactly what happened. Very good. Um, so then he says, take it back to the station, all right? And then so it goes back and they tell you the details, right? <clears throat> okay, you did good. You're not? Okay, that's all right. So I'm going to read to you a little bit from the book of John where it talks about being a witness. It says, first of all, was there TV like coverage in Jesus' time? Well, how on earth did they get it to know letters, about a burning building? Letters. What? Letters. What if they didn't know how to read or write? And the building, if they mailed a letter, the building probably would have been burned by the time. They would talk. They would talk, that's right. Sometimes they even drew in the sand. They would draw pictures. You know? Although if I drew a picture in the sand, it wouldn't look like what I was trying to tell them. We'd have to have Pastor Darren draw it, wouldn't we? Oh, oh he's, you haven't seen some of his pictures that he's drawn? No. Oh, my goodness. Well, when we go to prayer and praise, I'll show you a couple of them. They're hanging out there in the, in the fellowship hall. Did, you didn't know that? He's a wonderful know. painter. I think I've seen him. Yes, he's really good. I've tried to get him to come paint my kitchen cabinets, but he won't do it. I'm a, yes, Is that true? Okay, yes, it's true. Uh, two chicks hatch. <gasps> Did they really? Very good. Okay, now. I'm kind of an artist. Okay. I make realistic trees. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read to you from John, all right? It says, now listen closely in case we have to make glasses, all right? One day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him. He said to the people, look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one I told you about. I didn't know he was the Messiah, but when I baptized him, I saw the Holy Spirit coming down from the heavens like a dove. It came down and landed on his shoulder. I saw it with my own two eyes, and I tell you, this is the Son of God. When the people heard, Jesus, heard John's eyewitness report, it helped them understand and believe that Jesus was truly the Son of God. So see, even John the Baptist, he did it, didn't he? Okay, so how are we going to be eyewitnesses? Seeing them, how are we going to tell other people to be a witness? You like being an eyewitness? Okay, what's on my shirt today? I wore this today just... What does it say, St. John's United Church? Oh, no. I was reading it upside down. Community Church of Incense, isn't that where we are? Church of Incense Community. That's whatever. Okay, I would, this is an odd way to witness because one day... I, I probably wore it from church or whatever. I was at the store, and someone came up and said, Oh, your shirt. Are you, you go to that church out there on the hill? I said, Yeah, that's probably us. And so I was able to invite them to church and tell them that we had Bible school and church camp. And who is it? I didn't know who it was. I was just being a good witness. What the lady just... Then I was over at the, the show, The Passion, and some lady came up to me and looked at my shirt. We were all supposed to wear our shirts that day because Bonnie told us to. Anyway, we're there, and this lady came up and says, you know, I've got a sister that goes to that church. And you know who it was? It was Tawny Ridgely's sister. Well, I wouldn't have known to talk to her about that if I didn't have my shirt on. So this is a way to witness. So has anybody witnessed to you like a Sunday school teacher? or? Oh, you don't have one of those? Well, we'll have to talk to Miss Cheryl about that. Okay, you don't either? I want, I want one well, okay, that. listen. Okay, what does it say on your shirt? Um, Look down and read it to me. Jesus, Jesus put his power pulls, pulls, pulls us through. Through. Community church. So, the, see, you've got a shirt on. Oh, that's right. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but that's a good way to witness. That was my favorite Bible school. It was? Well, you tell Miss Cheryl that. Did you hear that, Miss Cheryl? That was his favorite Bible school. Woohoo! I like the train songs. Cause you like the what? I like the I like the trains. 
you like to train some? Yeah. Okay, I don't even remember how it went. Chugga, 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 no, okay. Anyway, that's the only thing I know about chains. No, don't look at me that way. That's right, anyway. Okay, so what if somebody at school comes up to you and says, what do you mean you go to church every Sunday? What, what would you say? I go to community church. That's right. I go to community church. Do you want to go with me? You can meet me there. Bring your mom and dad. You know, bring your sisters and brothers. You don't want to, you want to leave them at home? <laughs> I already got my... <laughs> How are you going to get here? When I want my job. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, here's the thing. What we're trying to do today is like within that Bible verse that we talked about, even John the Baptist saw. Good job. Anyway, he wants us to be witnesses for him, doesn't it? Because even John the Baptist was a witness. So we want to go out today and be um, the eyewitness news team. Can you be that? Yeah. You're really enthused about that, aren't you? Okay. I'll tell you what, let's fold our hands. We'll have a prayer and then we will walk slowly to prayer and praise time, all right? Okay, I say, you say. Okay, dear God, thank you for sending your son. Help us to be witnesses so that others will come to know your love just as we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can walk to prayer and praise time. Would you take this back to Pastor? We are going to be in 1 John today, and the first chapter. We're talking about declaration and fellowship. One of the things we need to know that if we're going to be a good witness, as Patty was telling us, uh, we need to know what it is we believe. And we can't tell anybody or declare what we believe unless we've got that squared away in our head. If we know what we believe, then we've got to make some point to declare that to others. And how many different ways are there that we can then make that declaration? And it can change from moment to moment, day to day, week to week, just depending on where we are, whether we're at home or at school, uh, with family, if we're friends, if we're out playing, if we're uh, out working, it doesn't matter. There's always an opportunity, but we've got to be aware that those things are there so that we can make those kinds of declarations. And on top of that then is the fellowship. Do I have fellowship with the Lord? And do I have fellowship with other believers? And what, does, what form does that fellowship take? So let's start here in 1 John chapter 1 and see where this takes us. So it begins this way. We declare to you what was from the beginning. So, very simple. We declare what we knew from the beginning. What was from the beginning? What was from the beginning? Well, God was in the beginning. We declare to you what was from the beginning. So we're not necessarily declaring something that's new. It might be new to people to hear it, but in that Jesus and God were, when, were there when creation was all put together and created it, it is from the beginning. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. So what they're saying is, we are going to declare to you our testimony. And what is our testimony based on? Our testimony is based on what has been from the beginning, but it's also based on what I have heard what I have seen, what I have touched, what I have learned and understood concerning God's word. Every last one of us in here has a testimony, and that's where it starts. 
Your testimony doesn't have to be one of those very dramatic things where I was the worst of sinners and I was living in the street, but I, I found a testament. Somebody prayed for me and I finally gave my life to Jesus and he drug me up out of the gutter and put my feet on solid ground. Those are wonderful testimonies. But most of us don't have that sort of testimony. For many is, well, you know, I've been going to church since I was born. For others, we've come to it later in life as teens or as adults, some even in their 60s and 70s. One gentleman uh, in the first church I was at here in Indiana, he would, he would make this uh, little statement on occasions. He said, you know, the one thing I regret is I didn't know sooner because he said all the time of my life I wasted that I could have been sharing the gospel with somebody else. And I think he was in his 60s, 70s when he gave his life to the Lord. But he realized that was a lot of years that he might have been sharing and could have been sharing. So our testimony is based on, all right, this is what I know about Jesus. This is what I've experienced. This is what I've read. This is what I've learned. This is what I've been taught. These are things you all know. You don't have to open up your Bible to find it. You don't have to memorize it because it's already a part of you. Being able to share somebody something straight from Scripture is always good. But sometimes we don't know the right one at the right time unless the Spirit reveals that to us. But in those moments, in those quick times when we've come across somebody who is in need, we're going to rely on what God has already placed within us. But we've got to have the forethought to use it, to put it to work. So we, we declare what we have seen, what we've heard, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, concerning God's word, concerning Jesus. And this life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify to it. So we declare it and we testify this is Jesus. This is what Jesus did in my life. How did Jesus change your life? When I gave my life to Jesus, one of the first things I wondered, <coughs> excuse me, one of the first things, I, it's going to work out sooner or later here, uh, one of the first things that I wondered after giving my life to Jesus <clears throat> and that realization, that revelation of what he had done for me. As I wondered, do you think anybody in the church knows? I literally thought this. I'm like 16. I wonder if the people in the church know. Because my experience of people in church <clears throat> up to that time in their life, in my life I should say, was very diminished. In other words, they came in, they were polite, they were quiet. You didn't hear people praising God. You didn't hear people shouting. You didn't see people raising their hands. You didn't see people with excitement on their face when they came to church. It was just this, you know, quiet, revered sort of look. And there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, having, <clears throat> well, I don't know, I, you, what in the world's going on here, but <clears throat> I was doing a lot of heavy lifting in the neighbor's yard yesterday and have probably worked up a lot of stuff. My lungs had just been sitting there for too long. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, why aren't people more excited? Why don't you see in their face that joy? Oh, we get to go to church today. We get to worship God today. We're going to sing about God's word today. Oh, look, we're going to have Sunday school today. It was just, yeah, I want to go do that. Some of you, uh, I don't know, did anybody go to, what was that, basketball? I think a basketball game there uh, here recently. Anybody watch basketball? A couple of you. Yeah, there's that uh, one school that they have a train or something for a mascot. I don't know what their, what their deal is. Uh, 
I'm going to have to find a new job next week. (laughs) Nobody goes to these games and aren't excited. Pick a sport. They're there and they're they're excited. They're looking to see what's going on. Uh, Heart rate's going up through the roof, just having all kinds of things going on. Or, you know, maybe things aren't going so well for their team, but you can see it on their face. They are invested in the moment. Now, if we can do that for sports teams and for other things that we like to do, how is it the church doesn't do it for Jesus? How is it we don't do it for Jesus? Uh, years ago, I, was, uh, I had stepped into a youth group just checking out, seeing what was going on, say hi to everybody, and they were getting ready to pray. And they said, okay, who wants to pray? And all of a sudden, everybody went like this. And they put their hands behind uh, their back or they put up their thumb or it, they did something. And you know why they were doing it? It's because the last one to do it had to pray. And I'm going, really? That's what we're doing? We're trying to avoid praying? Oh, I'm not it. I didn't, I don't, I don't want to pray out loud. You're telling me, and now adults are no better than this, and I've seen pastors do the exact same thing, whole group of pastors. All right, who wants to open up with a prayer? And everyone's just quiet. <laughs> so it happens across the board here. But how is it we have such a hard time praying out loud in front of other believers in fellowship with other people we know and care about, but we want it, we'll shy away from praying out loud to the one who gave us breath, to the one who has blessed us from the moment we were born, to the one who died for us, and we don't have time to talk to him, to pray. That's sad, folks. So like I said, when I was a teen, I wondered, did the church, does the church know? Did they realize what Jesus did? Because if they knew what he did, you'd think they would be a little more excited. They would have a little more enthusiasm. And they'd be a little more diligent in living that life because Jesus died on a cross for us, bearing our sins. Nobody in my life has ever loved me like that. The people in my life that love me have disappointed me more than not. And they could probably say the same for me. And it's not because they wanted to or not because I wanted to. It's just because we're fallible. And we do it, say weird things sometimes. But God loves us all the time and he loves us so much he allowed his son to die for us. And Jesus willingly paid the price for your sins and for mine. And that's something to celebrate. That's something to be excited about. That's something that we ought to be able to declare to other people. Because we will certainly declare things we've heard about other people to other people. Hey, did you see so-and-so? Can't believe their hair. Mm. Did you see what she was wearing? (laughs) We do it. We do that. But do we declare Christ? And do we do it regularly, regularly? And do we do it intentionally? This life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify to it and we declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard. So we declare eternal life. We declare that eternal life, that eternal life that was revealed to us as God was showing us who he was, who Jesus is, who he will be. And the eternal life that comes, the forgiveness of sins and the price that was paid, freely given for each of us. We declare it to you, what we've seen and we heard. And why do we bother to declare all these things? Here's why. So that you also may have fellowship with us. We declare it so others can have fellowship with us. It was declared to us so that we could have fellowship with them. Jesus' prayer was that we would be one with him as he is one with the Father so that we could all be together to have fellowship with one another. Why would we be satisfied that other people are not part of the fellowship? Why is that okay? 
It's one thing if we declare it and we share it and they say, no, thanks, I don't want to have nothing to do with that. All right, fine, that's your choice. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to pray for you. But if you want to know more, come back, call me. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Lord, where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to next? If we want others to have fellowship with us, we got to tell them why we're having fellowship. That means we've got to be excited about what we're doing. We've got to be excited about our worship. We've got to be excited about our time of prayer and our time with the Lord and our fellowship with him and what we've learned. We declare it so that you also may have fellowship with us for truly our fellowship is not just with each other. There are a lot of groups you can join and have fellowship with one another. A lot of groups that we belong to that we can have fellowship with one another. But with Jesus, with God, as followers of Christ, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And we're writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Why was John finding joy in this? Because he was finding joy in other people finding Jesus. In other words, it's also like saying, I'm not going to be satisfied. I'm not going to know the full joy of the Lord as long as there are other people out there that don't know who he is. And am I willing to go out and share with them? If you're concerned about being rejected and sharing your faith, let me set your minds at ease. You don't have to worry about that because it will happen. Let them reject you. They didn't want to hear it from Jesus, so there are going to be those who aren't going to want to hear it from us. So in that case, just like the disciples did, we give God praise that we're found worthy to be rejected because of him in our life. And we keep sharing it with the next person. That's what we declare. But that joy isn't complete just because I've found my way to the Lord and God has given me his grace in his life. It's complete because others around me are coming to know that. And if you've ever had a family member or a friend who has come to you, or even better, you were part of that moment when they gave their life to Jesus, and you see their eyes light up, and you see the countenance change, and say, I know who he is. I get it now. I can't believe it took so long, but I'm so grateful for what God has done for me. If you've ever seen that in somebody else, you know the joy we're talking about here. And if you've never seen that, then you really got to look in the mirror and go, why not? Because there is nothing holding us back from doing that except ourselves. We limit what we do. God does not. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This, verse 5 says, is the message we have heard from him from God, from Christ, from the Holy Spirit. This is a message we've heard from him, and we proclaim it, we declare it to you. What is the message? And this is, again, part of a testimony every last one of us have, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. People talking about the news, people talking about the weird things going on in the world, people talking about bad things that are happening in their life. God is light. Let me give you a new perspective on what you're going through. In him, there is no darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. So no matter what we go through, God is there to light our way and to make a means for us. We have one we can trust in, one we can lean on. Even though we don't know why things are happening the way they are, we can trust in him because he is light. We can proclaim that. This is something we all know. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. So here's the deal. If we're declaring it, if we're proclaiming it, and we're telling all of these things about God, things we know, things we've experienced, and yet, we choose to walk in darkness. When we choose to sin, we continue to do those things that we know God does not want us to do. 
We continue to do those things we know that are not a good witness. Then we are liars. If we say we have fellowship with him but are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So we can walk in darkness, we walk in light. It's a choice. Part of what he's telling us is we have to be consistent. If we're going to make the declaration, if we're going to believe it, we got to live it. And if we're going to live it, we're going to be sharing it. And if we're sharing it, then we're going to find that joy. And we are going to be in fellowship with him. And we're going to find it even when we do sin, when we repent, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. So it's not about never making mistakes, but it's about being more intentional about not making them and being right up front. Yes, that was me. Lord, I'm sorry. And I don't want to do that anymore. Strengthen me, equip me so that I don't have to do that and I don't want to do that. Struggling with things is not a sin. Giving into them and giving over to them is. But Jesus provides a way out. Now, verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we got to be upfront about what the things we're doing. If we're sinning, we're sinning. But we got to stop doing that and we got to repent. If we confess our sins, he goes on in verse 9, he who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So we don't want to play Christian. We don't want to play, uh, you know, church member. But what we want to do is live it and declare it and believe it and share it with others. He goes on in chapter 2. My little children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin. So he understands that we sin. And that we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still trying to get things straightened out in our lives. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the one to whom we have fellowship with. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not our, for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. There's something else we know. There's something else we can declare. We can share that with others. Hey, and I know you're struggling with stuff. I've struggled with things, but I repented and God forgave me. If you repent, God will forgive you because we have an advocate. We have Jesus who gave his life for us so that we would be and can be forgiven, washed away, cleansed, white as snow. Verse three, now by this we may be sure that we know him. Oh, here we go. How can I know I know Jesus? How do I know I have fellowship with him? How do I know what to declare? Here we go. Now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commands. And most of us know the things we're not supposed to do as well as the things we're supposed to do. We can be sure we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments. Uh-oh, here we go again. He is a liar. And such a person, the truth does not exist. So again, we need to be intentional. We can't claim to be a follower of Christ if we're not actually following him. We want to be able to give a true witness that others can see and say, yes, I've seen, you know, I remember what you were like then and I see what you're doing now and that's, it's amazing what God has done in your life. That's something that helps give other people uh, hope because they realize, and I've heard this from many people over the years, you know, I'm, I'm too lost. I can't even come into the church building because I'm pretty sure if I do, the roof's going to collapse on me. 
If that was actually true, there wouldn't be a church around that had a roof. But when they see what God has done in us, it begins to give them hope. Well, if God can do for you, then God could probably do for me. Even a sinner such as I. But whoever obeys his word, verse 5 tells us, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. If we're obeying God's word, if we're obeying his will, if we're obeying his commandments, the love of God is in us. And that is something we can also declare. And with that love, we can also share in that fellowship with the Lord and that fellowship with those around us. To love as we have been loved, to forgive as we have been forgiven, to share with others as somebody has shared with us. And by this we may, <clears throat> by this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. What do we declare? What fellowship do we have? And what are we doing about either of them? Are we abiding in the Lord? Is he abiding in us? Are we walking as he walked? Let's pray. And as always, the altar is open. Heavenly Father, Lord, you have shown us through those who have come before us what it is to walk with you, to abide in you. You have revealed yourself to us. We have heard from those who have declared what they have seen and experienced and felt and touched and heard and learned. We have seen them walking in the light. We have seen them sharing the gospel of truth. And Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for that one person or group of people who shared that testimony with us. That testimony that helped shape our lives so that we could begin to look within ourselves and say, do I believe? Do I believe in what Jesus did for me? Do I believe and am I willing to give my life and to repent of my sins? Father, we thank you for those declarations that were made for us. We thank you for those who walked in your path and listened and obeyed your commandments. Because of them, we have heard, we have seen, we have experienced, and we have believed. And we have given you our heart. We have repented of our sins. And you, through the Holy Spirit, abide in us. But Lord, we gotta continue to choose to let the world know, to share with them what we have heard, what we have experienced, how you have touched our lives, how you've revealed yourself to us. And whether it's in a simple gesture for a neighbor, praying for somebody who's brought food to our table, spending time visiting somebody who is sick, praying for a friend we just happened to come across at the store, helping a stranger, and maybe even, Lord, praying for them. To walk in your light, to walk in your commandments, to abide and to walk your path. That's what we want to do. So, Father, where we have fallen short for that right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do repent and ask you to forgive us of our sins. Lord, we don't want to be declared liars in front of the world. What we believe, what we declare, we want to live, and we want to live it intentionally. We want to enter into that full joy that's spoken of in here. So we want to share that with others so that they can join in fellowship with us. We want everybody to be a part of the fellowship. You welcomed us in, and we want to welcome others in as well. 
So whether it's my friend at school, a co-worker, a neighbor, someone I just happened to bump into in town, in the street, on vacation, could be anywhere, Lord, because you're already there. Help us to declare what we have seen and heard. And help us, Lord, to have intentional fellowship with one another and with you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And may others join us as well to walk as you walked. In Jesus' name, amen. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, equip you, and be with you now and forevermore to abide in you and you in him. Amen and amen. Amen.